Hey guys, it's Albert from Muffin Group. Today, I would like to show you how to create simple slider using query loops and dynamic tags in Bay Builder. Such slider is extremely light and it's a great alternative for slider plugins like Slider Revolution, for example. I often see that on the pages you build, you use very heavy plugins for simple sliders, which is not the best solution, to be honest. Hence, the idea for this tutorial. So, Let's jump over to my screen. What I basically would like to show you today is how to create such a simple and lightweight slider you actually see on my screen using query loops and dynamic data. For tutorial purpose, I will be working on slides custom post type, but you can work on any other that comes with the theme like clients, offer, portfolio, etc. Important note, if you don't see the custom post type you would like to use, please go to theme options, global, advanced, and make sure you did not disable custom post type you would like to use. Otherwise, it won't be available from the WordPress admin dashboard level. At the beginning, it is worth remembering that if we want to work with elements from a given custom post type, we must first add these elements. In my case, they are slides. As you see on the screen right now, I already have two of them, but you can add as many you like. So if we already have our elements in custom post type, we can proceed to creating the page. Let's publish this page and edit it with the Bay Builder. Let's create a section first and let's add two wraps inside because as I shown at the beginning of this tutorial, we will have an image on the right and some text on the left side. Now, let's fill our wraps with the elements we need for our slider. For this purpose, I will add an image to the right and heading, column text and button to the left wrap. Great, we have the gem of what we want to achieve. For better visibility, I will set a slightly gray background for our slider under Advanced, Background tab of the section. Excellent. We can now proceed to change the type of our section to Query Loop. To do this, go to the Section Settings and in the Type tab, change the option to Query Loop. After changing the section type, you will see two things. Additional options below available for Query Loop like query type, post type, categories, etc. and pink color label in the upper left corner of the section named section loop, which means that in this section, I will loop the content from slides custom post type. As I'm going to work on data from slides, I have to change post type to slides. As you have already noticed, our wraps have been duplicated. You may ask why? This is because I currently have two slides created, as I shown at the beginning of this video. And because the section is now a query loop, we can see both items created in the slides custom post type. Also, items are displayed as a list because this is the default display format in query loops. However, we want to display them as a slider. For this purpose, I have to switch to style tab and switch from default style to slider. In addition, as I shown in the example at the beginning of the tutorial, I would also like to have slight navigation in the form of dots. For that, I have to enable right option underneath. Perfect! I already have more or less an outline of what I would like my slider to look like. What I have to do now is to style it because the spacing between the elements is not maintained correctly. Let's maybe start from pagination. For that, switch to the Pagination tab and set offset to maybe 60 pixels. Also, the blue color of Active Dot doesn't look good, so let's change its color as well. Now, let's add some padding for top and bottom of the section. For that, let's switch to Advanced Spacing tab of the section and let's set maybe 120 pixels of top padding and 60 for the bottom. The last thing left and I don't like is the vertical alignment of the content on the left in relation to the image on the right. For that, go to the settings of the left wrap, 
You can do this by using right mouse click or by clicking pencil icon on the menu of that wrap. And in the advanced positioning tab, I have to select center option for wrap position. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to achieve. By the way, if you didn't watch the video where I've spoken about query loops, I will leave you the link to the tutorial in the left top corner so you can watch it anytime as it might be pretty useful stuff as well. Same link I will also leave down there in the description. Alright, now we can proceed to fill the elements in wraps with dynamic data as right now we have default static content. If you also haven't had a chance to watch my tutorial on dynamic data, I encourage you to click on the link in the upper left corner because I have explained some details regarding this topic there. Okay, let's replace default image in the right wrap with slides custom post type image. For that, let's go to the settings of that image. Now, let's clear default content and let's populate it with dynamic data by clicking on the right icon. Let's choose slide image. Let's do the same with the element in the left wrap. For the heading, I have to select slide title, for column text, slide meta description, and for the button, I'm gonna set the link only as I want the title to be the same for each slide. And that would be basically it. Seems like our slider is ready to go. What we can do now is update the page and view this page in front end. That's great, we just created custom slider in a few simple steps using query loops and dynamic data. I hope that my today's tutorial shed some light on how cool you can use such functionalities as query loops or dynamic data and create a slider that will be light, fast and will work on any device. I also realized that for some of you, query loops and dynamic data may be incomprehensible or hard to use at first glance, but I guarantee that once you understand them, you will love their capabilities. It is a really powerful tool to build whatever you want on your own. If you like this video, I suggest to watch other videos where I explain how to create custom product slider using query loops and dynamic data as well. You have both videos right now on the left and the right side. And as always, thanks for watching. And remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified every time you release a new video. And if you have more questions, please visit our support center at support.muffingroup.com.